Hi everyone, I'm Steve and this is the College Support Network. In the past, I've worked in high schools as a college advisor and I also have experiences working in college financial aid, academic advising, as well as admissions. I'm really passionate about college access and I know applying to colleges can be really confusing as well as really frustrating. That's why I'm here to provide you all with the most accurate and quality information so you can reach your college goals. In my last two videos, I provided you all with some general tips and information about multiple college essays that you have to write if you want to apply to multiple colleges. For today's video, I want to specifically talk about the UC Personal Insight Questions or PIQs. And basically, these are the short answers or short essays that you have to write if you do want to apply to the University of California. Some of the information in this video may sound pretty similar from what you heard in the last two videos, but like I said, it's going to go into a little bit more depth about the Personal Insight Questions specifically. I'll be dividing this video into three different parts. The first part is just going to be some general information that you should all be aware of regarding the PIQs, and then I'll go into six key tips I have for you all regarding the PIQs. And then lastly, I want to talk about how you could divide up or group some of the essays or essay prompts so you can figure out what each essay is asking for. But before we start, please go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And with that being said, let's get started. So like I mentioned earlier, the UC Personal Insight Questions or PIQs are just a series of essays that you have to write before you could complete your application to the University of California. The UC system provides you with 8 different essay prompts or PIQ prompts that you have to choose from. And then from there, you'll just choose four to write about and answer. For transfer students, this is going to look a little bit different. You'll actually have one required PIQ that you have to answer. And then from there, you'll have seven essay prompts to choose from. And then you'll just have to choose three to write about. For the purpose of this video, I'll be focusing on freshman admissions or freshman requirements for the PIQs. But a lot of the prompts are going to be pretty similar. So a lot of the information I provide here should be able to be used for both transfer and freshman students. For each individual PIQ, your essay response response can be up to 350 words and the PIQs or the UCs don't actually have a minimum for each individual response so it could really be as little as you want it could just be 10 words if you really want it to be with that being said though I do really recommend students to try to get to at least 250 words and the reason for this is because like I said the maximum is 350 and that's really not that much so a lot of these questions will require you to provide a decent amount of information and at least for me I just feel like 250 words is not really the sweet spot but it's just you need at least 150 words to really get a lot of your points across. And my last general piece of information about the PIQs is that you can only really write four responses. I've had a lot of students in the past ask me, hey, if I write a fifth response or a sixth response, or if I write a little bit extra, would it make me look like a better student? And the first thing is, I don't even think that UC application would allow you to write more than four responses anyway. But the second thing is you just really wanna focus on the four main prompts that are most important or meaningful to you. I'll go into this a little bit more when I talk about some of the general tips I have for you later. But like I said, just really focus on the ones that are most important to you and then answer them from there. Alright y'all, so the very first tip I have is before you even choose the essay prompts that you want to write about, create a list of activities, experiences, awards, honors, and anything else you can think of that you've done in high school. When creating your list, you really don't have to go into too much detail. Just take out a piece of paper and then just write down everything that you've done since freshman year to right now. So that includes, like I said already, some different experiences that you've had. So maybe talk about some clubs that you've been in, some sports that you participated in, and then also awards and honors let's say you won MVP for your basketball team or you won the science fair just anything that you could think of and this could be really important because a lot of PIQs definitely do ask you to provide information about some things that you've done in high school and or some things that you've accomplished in high school some of the other PIQ responses are going to ask you indirectly about some things that you've done or accomplished so this list could be really beneficial for you because when you're looking at your essay responses and figuring out what you have to write or maybe you need to provide evidence about some things that you've done you already have that list with you so you could just go down the list and then choose the activities awards honors and experiences that you can use to make your essay stand out a little bit more my second tip for PIQs is to really focus on the things that the admissions team or admissions counselor doesn't know about you already so like I mentioned in the last two videos your essays aren't a place for you to list the grades that you received the honors and awards that you were given the activities that you participated in and the classes that you've taken it's really a place for you to talk about anything else that I didn't just mention. Admissions counselors already 
already have all this information because they're already looking at your entire application. So just repeating the same things over and over isn't really going to help your case. So this is where you want to talk about your personality or things that you've done outside the classroom. Or if you want to talk about your grades or you want to talk about the classes or things that you've done, this is the time for you to go above and beyond and add context to it and not just repeat the same things over and over. The next tip I have for you all is just to really focus on the prompts that you are most confident and comfortable answering. Like I've mentioned so many times already, there's no PIQ or college essay prompt that's going to be weighed more than another. They're all weighed exactly the same so your best option is just to choose the one that you could write the most about and like I said, you feel the most comfortable and confident writing about. This is actually where the list that you created in tip 1 is going to really come in handy. So if you're looking at a specific essay prompt and you have literally nothing on your list that you can use to talk about or to use to answer that prompt, it's probably not the best idea for you to choose it to write about. The next tip for your personal insight questions is to really focus on yourself. Remember the name is personal insight questions so it should be as personal as you can make it be. When writing your essay responses, the majority of the content should be about you and your experiences. Not the experiences of your friends or your family or your teachers or just anyone else that you want to talk about. It should be about you. College essays were created because colleges wanted another way to learn more about who you are as a student as well as a person. So they don't really care too much about other people in your life unless they did play a role in who you are today. But with that being said, you want to keep all other people in your life to a minimum when you're writing your essays just because like I said already, these essays are about you and colleges want you to focus on you. My next tip is to be really intentional about your topic sentences as well as your concluding sentences. And basically what I mean by this is make sure that you start and end every paragraph with something that's meaningful or important. This is one of my key tips because admissions counselors often only have around 8 to 10 minutes to read your entire application. Not just your essays, your entire application. So a lot of the times when they get to your PIQs, they only have around 5-6 minutes left to read all your essay responses. So a lot of times they will just be skimming them. So with that being said, you really want to make sure a lot of your key points or the main things that you want to talk about are going to be in the beginning and ending of each individual paragraph just because that's how a lot of admissions counselors skim your essays. Obviously, you still want to make sure that your entire essay response is important and there's important aspects that you make throughout your entire response. But because a lot of admissions counselors do skim your essays, you want to be really intentional about where those key points are. And my very last tip about PIQs is to really focus on what each individual PIQ prompt is asking for. To do this effectively, you really do have to first break down each individual essay prompt and figure out the question or questions that they are asking. Luckily for you, I'll actually be breaking this down in the next part of this video. But for now, just know that you really do want to spend most of your time answering the question. Like I mentioned, you only have 350 words to write your entire response and honestly this really isn't that much at all. So that's why you want to make sure the majority of your essay or your response is you just answering the question. I think the hardest part about writing PIQs is finding a balance between being concise and clear while still also being able to provide enough detailed and descriptive information that you get your point across. But that's why I said really understanding what each individual prompt or PIQ is asking is going to be super crucial for you when you're writing your essay responses. Alright y'all, so I really hope those 6 PIQ tips are going to be useful for you when you're writing your essays. But now I want to go into the weeds of everything and provide you with some more prompt specific things that you should be thinking about. More specifically, I want to talk about different ways you could divide or group up the different essays and then figure out what the overarching themes or questions are, which will help you focus on which ones you want to write about. There's a lot of different ways you could divide and group up the personal insight questions, but this is just how I've always done it. The very first group includes PIQ number 1 and PIQ number 7. And for these group of questions, you really want to focus on your commitments and experiences with others around you. This can mean within your small group of friends, a larger group of friends, your entire school community, or maybe even your local city community. For these prompts, you really want to think about your ability to work alongside others and how your ability to work with others have been able to bring on positive impact in whatever community you want to talk about. To do this effectively, I really advise you all to think about your influence and how your influence affects or impacts others around you. For example, if you were class president, what did you do as class president to make your entire school better? Another example is maybe you were team captain of your soccer team. What did you do exactly as a team captain that positively influenced others around you and how did you make everyone better being a team captain? The second group includes PIQ number 2 and PIQ number 6. And for this group, you really want to focus on aspects of you that make you who you are. 
For these two prompts, I really, really advise you all to let your personality shine through. I know I said a lot already that your PIQs are really a space for you to talk about who you are and let your personality show, but I think these two essay prompts really emphasize that a little bit more. For the PIQs in this group, I feel like students always get into the trap of wanting to be as unique or as different as possible, and I think that's okay if that's the case, but a lot of the times you really just need to focus on who you are. This is actually where the list of activities awards and honors that you created in tip one that I mentioned earlier is going to come in handy as well. Obviously you don't want to make a list of a bunch of different things here. You want to choose a couple different things from that list and talk about why you pursued it, how it's impacted you, and what role they play in who you are today. Group 3 includes PIQ number 3 and PIQ number 8 and they really focus on the achievements or accomplishments that you've had in your life thus far, regardless of how big or small. Like the last group of PIQs, you don't want to just provide a long list of achievements or accomplishments that you've had so far. You want to choose a couple achievements and then talk a little bit about what you did exactly to get there or what you did exactly to accomplish it and then how it's positively influenced you today. For these two PIQs, you really want to be as specific as possible. So I really advise you all to talk about some day-to-day -day things, week-to-week -week things, or month-to-month -month things that helped you get to where you are and how they eventually helped you get your accomplishment. Another key thing I really advise you all to talk about in these two PIQ responses is the skills and lessons that you learned and how exactly you're going to implement them or use them when you're in college. For example, let's say you took five AP exams your sophomore year and you had to balance that with basketball practice. Talk about how you learned time management and how this is going to be useful for you when you go to a UC campus or any other college campus. In the very last group includes PIQ number four and PIQ number five. This group is actually pretty quite similar to group number three. However, it's a little bit more focused on your ability to succeed because of and in spite of different things in your life. For these two PIQ responses, you still want to think about accomplishments and achievements that you've had, but you also really want to focus on external factors as well. You can think about answering this question in two different ways. The first is, what was your accomplishment or achievement and what helped you get there? The second is, what was your achievement or accomplishment and what challenges did you have to overcome to receive it? Additionally, to effectively answer these two PIQ questions, think about what lessons you learned and how it will benefit you once you're a college student. For example, let's say you know you really wanted to be a computer science student but your school or your high school just didn't provide you with the classes or any information that helped you get there. So instead of just giving up, you decided to take computer science classes at your local community college. For this example, the external factor would be community college classes and then what you learned is that you need to go above and beyond what's just in front of you and take advantage of any other educational opportunities that may be available for you. All right, y'all, so that's all the tips and general information I have for the PIQs in this video. Like I mentioned already, if you haven't watched my last two videos about college essays, I really do recommend watching that as well. For those of you that are interested in applying to the California State University or the CSUs, I'll be making a specific video next week about how to answer some of the EOP questions that are in the application. So subscribe if you haven't done so already. And now before I let you go, I do have one question for you. And that question is, if you studied your PIQs already, which PIQ prompt or which PIQ question is your favorite and why? Alright y'all, that's all I have for you for today. You could have been doing anything else, but you spent it here with me, learning about college, and more specifically, the UC personal insight questions. I think that's super awesome. As always, thumbs if you learned and subs if you loved. Take care, y'all.